You're watching Nine TV. This program aims to find solutions to your medical queries. It seeks answers to common health problems that have been hounding you. We will help you out in finding answers to your medical concerns. Good evening everyone, I'm Angel Jacob and this is MedTalk, your weekly on-air health consultation here on 9TV. Most people may experience anal discomfort at some point in their lives. But they don't talk about it because it's quite an embarrassing topic to discuss. The most common complaints involve pain and itching and in some cases may even involve bleeding. Anal diseases are any abnormalities in the anus and the most common anal diseases are hemorrhoids, anal fissure which is a wound in the anus and then fistulas or uh, yung pigsa na pumutok na hindi gumagaling. The risk increases, especially if you have a poor diet and hygiene. Too much moisture in your bottom can also lead to itching. But while these anal ailments may temporarily cause discomfort and soreness, there are many ways to alleviate the situation. One of the main messages, even if these are common conditions, these are not life-threatening conditions, Best to have it checked up just to make sure, uh, especially if you're at the age 40 or 50 or if you have changes in the way you move your bowels. What types of foods should you eat to avoid anal discomfort? What treatment options are available for this kind of medical condition? All these and more tonight on MedTalk. Joining us tonight is Dr. Armando Crisostomo, a colorectal surgeon at the Qualimed Health Network. He's also a former president of the Philippine College of Surgeons. Also joining us tonight is Dr. Manuel Francisco Rojas, consultant director of the Medical City Colorectal Clinic and the chairman of the Department of Surgery of the Medical City. You may join the discussion by calling our hotline at 548-4678. Good evening, doctors. Welcome Good evening, to Angel. Good evening, Angel. Doc Rami and Doc Arman. Yes. So as colorectal surgeons, uh, you tackle the um, medical concerns of um, the rectum and the anus. So tonight it's about anal diseases. What are anal diseases? Doc Rami, let's start with you. Well, uh, there are many diseases that actually can affect the anus. So we call them anal diseases because uh, uh, they affect those, those areas. There. And there are, several, there are several very common ones. For instance, hemorrhoids and then fissures and uh, uh, abscesses and fistulas, as well as anal warts. No? But other than that, there are other conditions that uh, should be brought to the attention of a doctor also. So there are many conditions actually. So we love them all plus one when we discuss this uh, in a topic like this, in a forum like this. Mm -hmm. So before we go into the diseases mm -hmm. of um, the anus and yes. the rectum, let's first uh, understand the function of um, the rectum and the anus. Doctor, yes. Doc Arman, please tell us about that. Yes, well, the, the rectum or the anus is considered the terminal portion of the gastrointestinal tract. It is part of the excretory system. So any excess food or waste materials that our body ingests and no longer needs mm -hmm. is expelled through that uh, very important uh, part of the anatomy called the anus and rectum. And here, usually, as we become adults, uh, the stools, uh, which form part of the waste material, become somewhat solid in character. And uh, in children or in babies, we have not developed that ability to voluntarily expel uh, the contents of uh, the rectum. But as we get older, we develop that capability to be able to detect whether we are going to pass out gas mm. or whether we're going to pass out something very soft or we have some diarrhea or whether what is going to come out is solid. So at an appropriate time, our 
anus and rectum is a very sensitive uh, organ in itself because it's able to distinguish whether you're going to pass gas, liquid, or stool, solid stool, at an appropriate time. Mm -hmm. So it, it gives you these signals which are uh, processed by your brain so that at an appropriate time you go to the comfort room to expel yourself. You mm -hmm. know? So just imagine, you know, can, if you put in a mixture of air, water, and uh, solid yeah. in your hand, can your hand you know, be able to expel air only, mm -hmm. liquid only? Your hand cannot do that. But they say your anus and rectum mm -hmm. can do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's how important uh, that portion of the anatomy is, mm -hmm. Angel. Do people realize how important it is? Well, you know, they, they realize it when they get older, uh, when they age. One of the most important uh, structures of the anus is the muscle. Mm -hmm. It allows you to either hold it when you don't want to go or yes. to release it. And if there is weakening of the muscles, then people will notice that they, they can't hold it as well anymore. It's called incontinence. Mm -hmm. The function of the rectum is to, to store these things. Uh, if you don't want to release it, it allows you to store it and then it releases it in one nice go. Mm. Without that function, uh, people will just go constantly and, and, and it doesn't have that uh, satisfying expulsion uh, that the muscles of the rectum provide. So it's a very complex and fascinating mm. organ also. Mm -hmm. and, and because it's very complex, it's very fascinating, we'd like to learn more about it. And uh, this, um, diseases or the pain and irritation come because of certain um, medical conditions mm -hmm. that uh, are brought about by maybe controlling it mm -hmm. or maybe releasing it too mm -hmm. much. Um, mm -hmm. Let's go now to the diseases that yes. um, cause anal pain and probably irritation discomfort. and discomfort. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, what among the common um, diseases should we tackle first, doctors? Maybe the most common that we have uh, worldwide will be hemorrhoids. Okay, let's start with hemorrhoids. Okay. Yes. Uh, w what exactly are hemorrhoids? How do they form? And which part of the anus is affected? Uh, Doc Arman. Well, every one of us, even as newborns, we were born with certain mm -hmm. tissues in our anorectal area, which try to cushion the expulsion of the fecal material. Now, because of uh, certain uh, predisposing conditions like poor bowel habits in which you have too little fiber in your diet mm -hmm. or you tend to be constipated or you strain too much in your as you move your bowels these uh, cushions slide down and become somewhat inflamed and inside these cushions are certain blood vessels also so that when these uh, blood vessels slide down, some of them get traumatized, and then they result in some symptoms like bleeding. Mm -hmm. okay? Now, in general, we have uh, uh, three types of hemorrhoids. Mm -hmm. We have the external hemorrhoid, which is uh, found outside, and this is on the area that is sensitive, and this, therefore the main symptom of these hemorrhoids are pain. The second type of hemorrhoid are more of the internal hemorrhoid, and this is where, where the blood vessels are located. So when you have internal hemorrhoids, these are the ones that present with bleeding. If you have both, it's called a mixed hemorrhoid. Mm -hmm. So these patients who have mixed hemorrhoids will, have, will feel something bulging out when they have a particularly difficult uh, bowel movement, and then sometimes they also have bleeding as well. Mm -hmm. So depending on whether you have a hemorrhoid that is located externally, internally, or a mixed one, uh, that will determine the kind of symptom that you will present. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that it is common. It's quite common. Mm -hmm. It's quite common. You, you have to understand, all of us are born with hemorrhoidal tissues. Okay. They're part of the normal anatomy. It's yes. just that when people have symptoms due to the factors mentioned, yes. that's when we label them yeah. as hemorrhoidal Okay. So all of us are born with hemorrhoidal uh, tissues, tissues, and they are uh, triggered. They become um, when they slide down, okay. they become what we call pathologic okay. or symptomatic uh, hemorrhoids. Mm -hmm. You know, our anuses are used every day. Just sitting down on them, 
produces pressure. So eventually, these structures become lax, they become loose as we age, as we use them constantly. So that's mm -hmm. when some people develop hemorrhoidal symptoms. Okay. Doctors, before we go to a break, do you only get hemorrhoids if you're constipated or even if you have diarrhea? There are some that, you can get that it. actually some run in families. There are some mm -hmm. are young and they develop oh. these symptoms also. So it's, it's a um, chicken and egg situation. Mm -hmm. uh, some because of constant straining will develop hemorrhoids, but there are others whose anatomy predisposes them to, to the more hemorrhoidal symptoms and the more they they strain, the more their, their diet is not too good, then it worsens the symptoms. Okay, we'll talk about the diet. We'll <laughs> talk about um, taking in more fiber so that yeah. uh, it doesn't trigger those yes, hemorrhoids. Yes, yes. We'll talk about that and more okay. when MedTalk returns. Having trouble with anal discomfort? Medical experts suggest that you soak your bottom in a tub filled with warm water to help relieve cramps and muscle spasms brought about by hard bowel movements. We're back here on MedTalk still talking about anal diseases. Doc Rami, Doc Arman, before we uh, cut to the break, we were talking about some of the symptoms of hemorrhoids. Let's talk more about um, the other symptoms of uh, hemorrhoids. Does it vary from person to person? Yes, and from type of hemorrhoids. So, for instance, internal hemorrhoids that come out, they come out when you, when you move, and then sometimes patients have to push it back in. That's one of the symptoms. It's called a prolapse. Mm -hmm. um, pain may be one of the symptoms, but usually because it's inflamed. So the pain is generally if, because of a, what we call a thrombosed hemorrhoid and the pain usually lasts a, a few days before it disappears. Mm. And that, that's one of the ways we try to distinguish hemorrhoids from what we call fissures, which we will talk about later. Because okay. the, the, the pain you feel every day, every time you go, is usually due to a fissure rather than a hemorrhoid. Oh, okay. So yeah. we'll distinguish yeah, between we'll distinguish the two later. later. Yeah. So hemorrhoids... Um, if they're painful, they're really very swollen or very prolapsed. Then, okay. And you can see that obviously from the outside. Okay. okay. But, but upon um, checkup uh, with your doctor... Most of the time they're not painful. Most will of the, the time individual know? Is there like a warning sign? Uh, well, the most alarming for many patients mm -hmm. is actually when they pass a stool and then there's blood that drips into the toilet bowl. Mm -hmm. That can be very alarming for many patients yeah. okay. and it's often the trigger that makes them seek consultation with physicians or surgeons like us. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, it's, uh, it can differ really from one uh, patient to another, the extent and severity of the bleeding. But usually the bleeding stops after a few minutes. Okay. It's just very scary because it's, very it's scary. bright yeah. red and then when it drips into the toilet bowl, it it spreads. So you think or when they wipe themselves yeah. after having a bowel yeah. movement, there's blood on yeah. the tissue. Okay, so is that um, cause for alarm or? Well, it's a sign that you should get checked up. Okay, does that mean there's a wound or a pop blood vessel or a tear? It could be. It could, could be, be either one. one. Just an or erosion, both. yeah. Okay. But, you know, hemorrhoids are not life-threatening conditions. You know? Even if they're bleeding, usually they will stop. Mm -hmm. What we do need to check is that there's nothing more serious. Okay. Uh, that's happening. And if it's just a hemorrhoid, we reassure patients it's just a hemorrhoid. Mm -hmm. Do you know if you have hemorrhoids? Will you know it until you pass? Well, you'll feel it. You'll you feel will it. feel it. Especially when it prolapses. Okay. After you yes. wipe yourself, often some patients will feel that there is something bulging mm -hmm. in their anal area. What we do recommend though is don't presume it's a hemorrhoid. Let us, let us doctors yes. be the one to tell you because we need to check you up thoroughly, particularly at certain age groups, 40, 50, above. We need to make sure that there's nothing more than, than just a hemorrhoid. There are more serious disease yeah. conditions like uh, rectal cancer mm -hmm. or yeah. colon cancer that present also with bleeding. Okay. Mm -hmm. And therefore, sometimes uh, the patients will dismiss it and think it's just a hemorrhoid or sometimes because of embarrassment because you're dealing with a yeah. very sensitive part of the anatomy. That's true. They delay consultation and uh, sometimes there's a more serious problem mm -hmm. occurring pala. Okay. Doctors, we have a question from Twitter this time. I am planning to work abroad. Should I have my hemorrhoids removed? If you're not feeling anything, you shouldn't. 
okay. because everyone has hemorrhoidal tissues and we only treat symptoms. And uh, that's one of our advocacies in, the, in our Philippine Society of Colorectal Surgeons. Sometimes we're asked to remove hemorrhoids just because of these physical examination findings on uh, work application for abroad. Uh, just because they're seen, and, 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 and I think the, the agencies are afraid that these people will have hemorrhoid problems while they're overseas and they will end up having to have it uh, treated over there. But, you know, we only treat hemorrhoids when they're symptomatic. So if patients are not feeling anything, mm -hmm. we don't need to treat them. Okay, yeah. all right. Maybe no. we should take advantage of this opportunity to educate the public that not all hemorrhoids have to be removed. When you mentioned that it should be removed or advice on whether it should be removed, seems to implicate that uh, it has to be surgically excised. Mm -hmm. Right now, we usually grade hemorrhoids from grade one, the, most, the smallest or least symptomatic, to grade four. And usually we advise surgery only if it is a very severe grade four. You have bleeding, recurrent bleeding, and the hemorrhoid has prolapsed to the point that even the patient cannot push it back any longer. So that is the only type of hemorrhoid that should be surgically excised. Okay. The lower grades or forms of hemorrhoids can be treated either uh, based, based on their symptoms, dietary modification, better education on how to handle your bowel habits, okay? And even the really small asymptomatic ones, as mentioned by Dr. Rami here, should actually not be given anything. They're just absurd. Okay. There are also non-surgical ways of treating them. Mm. For instance, rubber band ligation. Yes. Or injecting what we call sclerotherapy agents, uh, which are easy for, for people to, to go through their outpatient procedure. So uh, speak to a specialist first if mm -hmm. you're considering treatment of, of hemorrhoids, no? okay. whether they're necessary or not. No. Okay. And uh, necessary treatment um, will help you in uh, preventing the hemorrhoids. Let's say there's treatment given. Um, will the hemorrhoids come back after the treatment given? What are the preventive measures for it not to come back or recur? The treatment is a balance between what the patient feels and what he wants. Uh, surgery, for instance, can remove hemorrhoids more permanently, but it can be very painful. So some patients don't want the pain of surgery, so we offer them something less painful, uh, less traumatic, but at the expense of the possibility of coming back. Now, but like I said, you know, hemorrhoids are not life-threatening. Mm -mm. Some people can have hemorrhoids and not want to have anything done to them, and mm -hmm. that's fine with us too, as long as we check them up and make sure there's nothing more serious mm -hmm. than their hemorrhoids. Okay. Okay. And that's why most of our patients, uh, even after a hemorrhoidectomy, we try to educate them and treat them so that they, this recurrence of any symptoms will be prevented. Mm -hmm. And really it's all modifying your lifestyle, having more fiber in your diet. Mm -hmm. And if you're not able to take uh, enough fiber, even uh, take in some either natural or uh, artificial fiber supplements that may help you have an easier bowel movement. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've uh, discussed and uh, you've enlightened us on hemorrhoids. Now let's go to fissures. Uh, maybe we can use oh, your okay. uh, uh, model here, doctor. Please help us understand what okay. are fissures. This is the model of a rectum and the anus. It's the most important structure in the anus are the muscles. These are the muscles over here. This is your rectum. These purple things here are your hemorrhoids, external, oh. going outside, and internal. A fissure is just a wound in the anus. That's why it's mm. painful. And if you notice this little red line over here, this yeah. one over here, that's a wound. Okay, yes. That's the wound of a, of a fissure. Illustration of a fissure. Yeah. Okay. okay. And uh, this is the rectum. This is an example of a polyp, and this is an example of a tumor. Mm -hmm. So all of these may have similar symptoms, no, but the most important symptom of a fissure is pain because it's a wound, mm -hmm. all right? So, and then bleeding because the wound is fresh. <coughs> Again, there's bleeding. Oh, yes, wh yes. Why does this happen? Why does a fissure develop? Well, trauma. So either you have a very hard stool that you force out mm -hmm. or you can have repeated bouts of diarrhea which will traumatize also your, your, your anus. No? Mm -hmm. Are there types for the fissure? Uh, will the fissures uh, recur or just... There are two types. The first type is the acute fissure which just happens recently and usually heals on its own like any mm -hmm. wound within a month no? and then there's the chronic fissure that keeps coming back 
And that's the problem that most of our Fisher patients deal with. It keeps coming back, sometimes they think it's hemorrhoid, but it's really the pain during bowel movement that, that, that lets them visit us. Mm -hmm. One characteristic symptom that alerts me to the possibility of a fissure is that the patient will often complain when you see or examine them the, the pain is out of proportion to what you see on rectal or physical examination. And secondly, some of these patients develop a certain phobia already to having a bowel movement. Oh. They fear going to the comfort room anymore because each bowel movement seems to elicit that painful episode because the uh, bowel movement will traumatize the fissure again and again, causing recurrent pain. Mm -hmm. Understandable. Um, of if, course, you don't want to see blood in your yes, stool, yes, yes. and you don't want it the such pain. a yeah. so much pain no, from your description. This alone. causes a vicious cycle because of their fear of having a bowel movement. They tend to withhold. Yes. And therefore, they become even more constipated. Yes. Will that lead to hemorrhoids if they hold it and the stool becomes harder than it they should be? They can have both hemorrhoids and fissures. Oh. In fact, the interesting thing is most of our patients with fissures actually the first thing they tell us in the clinic is, Doc, I have hemorrhoids. And then when we interview them and we check them, we, we tell them, you know, it's not the hemorrhoids that's causing your pain, it's mm -hmm. the fissure. And the fissure needs to be treated. If you only treat the hemorrhoids, then the symptoms of the fissure will persist. That's why it's very important that the doctor or the surgeon really distinguishes what the patient is feeling. Is it hemorrhoidal symptoms or is it fissure symptoms? Mm -hmm. Because the treatments may vary. So you can't just self-medicate at home and assume that it might be a fissure or it's just hemorrhoid. No, it's not you know, just, just there. No? Yeah, it's but fissures hemorrhoids. like hemorrhoids are also not life-threatening. Okay. So many people, as long as they know it's a fissure or hemorrhoids, mm -hmm. will we'll live with it. No? But, uh, and we only treat those who really want to have themselves treated. Okay. However, again, it, like hemorrhoids, you need to s get checked up to make sure that it's really just a fissure or a hemorrhoid. Okay. There's another disease, doctors, called uh, anal abscess, which is closely linked to uh, fistula. fistula. Yes. We'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, is it life-threatening? Are these two other diseases life-threatening? We'll talk about that when MedTalk returns. Okay. We're back here on MedTalk, still talking about anal diseases. This time, doctors, let's talk about uh, anal um, abscess and fistula. Oh, you'll use your model again, doctor. Um, you know, a pimple. Mm -hmm. A pimple in the face, there's usually an, a, a clogged pore. And then the, the, the sebum accumulates, and then it gets infected, and then it bursts. Yes. That's similar to an abscess or a pig's There are glands also in the anus that... Uh, secret a secret mucus. mucus and then they get clogged mm -hmm. and the, that mucus gets infected and becomes what we call a pigsa or an abscess okay and it drains uh, medyo malas lang because the bacteria in the anus is different than what you have in your skin the bacteria is more virulent so th while the abscess like this one this is an abscess here collecting pus it bursts out through the skin the wound doesn't heal after it bursts out the wound doesn't heal because there's a connection between this, the wound, to the inside of the anus. Mm. So yeah. it continuously gets infected, and that's what we call a fistula. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no wonder they're closely linked. They're closely yeah. linked. The infection usually comes from the stool, the yes. bacteria that's in the stool. Some of them enter that uh, yeah. opening and continue to, to drain out. produce pus. Yeah. Okay. So um, in the event that the you have to drain the pus. Well, the pus has to be drained. It yeah. doesn't drain on its own. Sometimes it does. Many times it does. Yes. Actually, it drains okay. on its own. Okay. Yes. But then it, it becomes a fistula. Then it becomes a, if it doesn't drain out, we drain it out. But then even that can become a fistula. So is it automatic that if you have anal abscess, it will become a fistula whether or not the not doctor Not automatic, but it? very high. Maybe 50 to 75% of the time. Okay. Yeah. Can you avoid that happening? <laughs> can you avoid pimples? It, well... Dep oh, is it depends. It, it pimples, no? The, sometimes yeah, they're linked some. with, with yes, age. Yes, yes, uh, when you're a teenager, yes, yes, yes. you know, these yeah, pimples becomes, come out. Yeah, because you have uh, your oil glands become a little sebum. more productive. Yes. Yes. But in terms of the anus or rectum, eh, there's really no way to prevent it. Because remember, all of us are born with those kind of anal glands that yes. are secrete mucus to help sort of lubricate the stools yeah. as they come out. Mm -hmm. So parang swerte o malas na lang that some bacteria are able to enter yeah. that opening and produce yeah. the infection. Okay. Is there a way para maiwasan na magkapigsa in that area? Which, uh, 
it's common, no? It's like very you common. You hear that, it's very once common. in a while, someone will say, yeah, I have a pigsa in that yeah, area. It's very common. It's not easy to prevent. You can be the most uh, hygienic and clean person and it can still hit you. So, uh, you just be aware of the condition, I suppose, and, uh, okay. and uh, if it becomes a fish, you'll see us. Okay. Um, is it connected to any other health uh, problem? Is it a health concern? Of course, it's a health concern because it's still a long-standing infection. Uh, there is a small risk that if you leave it for 10 years, it can develop into a cancer, but very small risk. The biggest risk really is in those whose immune systems may not be as healthy. Mm -hmm. Diabetics, those on chemotherapy and that like, then the infections can really be bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the resistance to infection goes down. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, is there medication to increase your uh, immune resistance? Yeah, your resistance um, aside from the common uh, If you're on chemotherapy agents, there may be, but you know, the, the, infection, the, the fistula will remain. It requires some form of surgery. Yeah. To, to, to heal it. So there's no medications to actually cure the fistula. Mm -hmm. What the medications will do will perhaps lessen the, the chance of the infection becoming life-threatening. Yeah. Unlike hemorrhoids, where in some, most hemorrhoids cannot, should not be treated surgically. Mm. Once you have an abscess or a fistula, mm -hmm. it should be treated, mm -hmm. yeah. usually through surgery. Mm -hmm. Is this a part of, uh, or can you get it from a sexually transmitted infection? Occasionally, okay, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. At least in my practice, and I think Ramis yeah. also, uh, we observe this to be a s slightly more frequent among homosexual men, mm -hmm. and maybe because of uh, that practice of, you know, having anal receptive uh, intercourse, mm -hmm. trauma, continuous trauma, and uh, of course poor hygiene in that area can contribute really to the formation of, of. Uh, anal abscess and uh, fistula. Mm -hmm. let, let, let me add though that majority are not homosexuals or mm -hmm. you know, majority are just your common run of the mill. Uh, and, and, and they're more straightforward to treat but there are fistulas that are more difficult to treat and then when we dig into the history that's when we find out there are other conditions that may be making it more difficult to treat whether it's sexually transmitted or immune compromised conditions, even tuberculosis. There's okay. so many other, uh, but for most of the patients, maybe 90%, they're straightforward abscess becoming fistulas because of a, a clogged infected gland. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, you, can you be the cleanest and still have yes. Uh, yes. abscess? Yes. 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 Okay, because you mentioned the uh, hygiene, so yes, I'm thinking yes, lang, yes. Kung sobra kang linis, you can still have it. Yes, you can still have it. Walang pinipili ang... Walang pinipili. Walang pinipili. Yeah, you mentioned kanina, no? Although we would advise the public not to self-medicate. Okay. Especially a tendency, again, of the public because of embarrassment in seeking consultation is that they self-medicate themselves too long with antibiotics, thinking that it will disappear. Sometimes it, uh, the symptoms get reduced, the inflammation subsides with antibiotics, but very rarely do they get cured permanently just with anti antibiotic treatment. Mm -hmm. And you might be drinking the wrong type of antibiotics by yes. self-medication, so you okay. need to really see a, a doctor. Cholera your colorectal yes, surgeon yes, for yes, that matter. Yes. Doctors, let's now talk about anal warts. Is this common? How do they develop? Uh, anal Alman. warts are still not as common as the first uh, three diseases that we have discussed. But in, again, in my practice, I am seeing this more frequently now compared to five or ten years ago. Wow, uh, anal this? warts, well definitely, majority of this, if not all, is uh, really sexually transmitted. Uh, the main cause is actually HPV uh, virus. Mm -hmm. And Sim this HPV virus is the one that produces the symptoms. It's similar to your cervical yeah. warts. So it's, it's the a same. form of genital warts. Yes, yes, it's a genital warts. Genital warts or okay. anal warts just have really one co cause, the HPV virus. Human papilloma yeah. virus. But this is the one that also leads to cervical, cervical cancer, cancer as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, why, uh, why do they form in that area? And, and what... What are they like? They're like skin tags, are they? Are, uh, al almost like that, but they can they can coalesce, they can group together, that they look like cauliflowers, they can look yeah. huge. Can Some they of them mimic are just as small, a hemorrhoid? Kung no. <laughs> well, to, to an expert eye, they don't look like hemorrhoids. Okay. And, 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 you know, many of these people know they have a history. Uh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry, doctor, you were saying earlier. 
Yeah, uh, some of these are just very small uh, lesions, but some of them can be really very large, almost looking like a, the vegetable cauliflower. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's not like the warts that we normally see, no, na no, no, like they're, a dot or like a skin no, tan. No, they come, they group together, and they grow faster. Oh, they grow wow. faster. In fact, one of our difficulties with this 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 problem is yes. they can recur. Even if we treat them, they have a they have a tendency to recur. Okay. Yes. Or they have a tendency to get reinfected with their partners again. So it's. It's a little more complex yeah. in, in treating. Mm -hmm. We have to treat these patients rather holistically. Mm -hmm. uh, but at least now, I think compared to before, uh, many of our patients used to be embarrassed in admitting their, their sexual preferences. But now they're, they're more open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're able to That's advise good. them properly because of that. So aside from uh, treating them either symptomatically or sometimes we apply some uh, chemicals to sort of cauterize or we actually surgically cauterize large lesions or we have to excise the really very large lesions we really advise them to really abstain uh, from uh, anoreceptive uh, intercourse and uh, of course uh, practice uh, more hygienic uh, sexual practices as well. Mm -hmm. The other issue with warts is because it's a sexually transmitted disease. There may be also other sexually transmitted disease like gonorrhea, syphilis, yes. and, and then also HIV. HIV, which is also growing in this country. And mm -hmm. so uh, that's, that's a big issue that we, have to, that we will be grappling with more and more in the future. Okay, so um, it's, uh, the statistic that you mentioned earlier that you noticed uh, the last five, yeah, five years? The last five to ten years, uh, I'm seeing really more patients. When, uh, when we, were, <laughs> we were training in PGH yes. <laughs> many years ago. Just a couple of years ago. Yeah, know, a couple of years ago. <laughs> maybe we would see one a month. Now we're seeing three a week. Wow. Yeah. In our charity services. So mm -hmm. that's, that's how fast they've yeah. our, our lifestyles mm -hmm. as a country really has, has changed. Mm. But that's why uh, I always tell my patients, even if I'm able to remove or cauterize your, your warts, I'm not able to eradicate the virus. The virus actually st really stays there. Okay, so you just cauterize the wart. What you we see. Wart. What you see. What you take see. it out yes. uh, via surgery yeah. or, yes. or cautery. Yes. But the but virus essentially remains in that area so that when your resistance goes down, okay. uh, you can have recurrence of this. It is warts again. The other thing is just like cervical warts that yes. can cause cervical cancer, yes. long-standing <coughs> anal warts can cause anal cancer. Yes, in the long run. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So aside from taking that out, you need to monitor them. You need to, monitor, need to monitor and them. you uh, should not feed that virus, no? When your resistance is that is that yeah. did I say that correctly or properly? <laughs> that when your you know your resistance is down. Well, you need to be monitored. You, you need, need to, to be monitored. You need to change your lifestyle mm -hmm. and really improve on your uh, immune system through good nutrition, being physically fit, exercising. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And safe sex. And safe sex. Yeah. And see your, your doctor, no? Uh, yes. Yes. Every, how, how often should one see their uh, colorectal surgeon? For, for warts? Yes. It depends, but uh, we see them weekly for the first six weeks of treatment, and then maybe monthly for the first six months, and then every three months. Okay. We, we have other things. We, sometimes we give these uh, immunization against HPV also. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. We There's have the creams vaccine that we apply. Also? Yeah. Yeah. Doctors, um, to learn more about, uh, you know, uh, being more careful about our general well-being yeah. and, and the rectum and, and anus, no, for, for this particular episode. I understand March is uh, devoted to... Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month. It's the International Month for Colorectal Cancer Awareness. I'm wearing my blue, blue ribbon. ribbon. I didn't yes. mean to cut you there, but we'll <laughs> talk about uh, Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month. It's this March when MedDoc returns. If your bottom appears to be itchy and irritated, you may want to lessen the amount of drinks you normally consume in a day. According to the American Society of Colon and Rectal Surgeons, avoid having more than six glasses of alcohol, coffee, or any carbonated drink in a day. We're back here on MedTalk still talking about anal diseases. 
Doctors, March is Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month. Please tell us about uh, the activities for this month and your advocacy. Well, colorectal cancer is one of the most common cancers worldwide. It's number, either number two or number three. In some countries, it's number one. And uh, it's also one of the most preventable and curable cancers when caught early. So our advocacy campaign is really greater awareness so that we can pick it up earlier when it's either preventable as a polyp or curable as an early stage mm -hmm. cancer. How do we um, catch it as, as a patient? No? How, how do we... Uh, identify or how do we know when to see our our doctor mm -hmm. uh, our so for most people surgeon. as long as you reach 45 50 even if you're feeling healthy and you're not feeling anything else you should get screened either a colonoscopy which can be good for 10 years if it's normal or what we call a fecal occult blood every year okay. it's a stool exam that mm -hmm. checks for microscopic blood every year and only if it's positive do we do a colonoscopy yeah, th but that's for the average population yeah. however if you have what we call a first degree relative meaning a brother a sister mm -hmm. or your parents mm -hmm. who've had a history of colon or rectal mm -hmm. cancer the risk is higher okay. and you should be screened earlier, earlier. than the usual uh, than patient. the usual 45 yes. 40, 45 or 50 you should be screened at maybe even uh, 40 or younger of course, there are warning signs. Now, screening is for people who are not feeling anything. If you have warning signs, this is not screening anymore. You should get uh, diagnosed early. The warning signs are blood in your stools, a change in your bowel habit, abdominal pain, unexplained weight, weight loss, loss. Yes. anemia. If you're pale and you don't know why you're, you're pale. You know? mm -hmm. do, your, uh, do patients... Uh, are they open to, to getting a colorectal exam? Are they open to um, getting their um, I stool? Think more and more, I think exam. more and more, more, and more patients are getting open. But again, one of the reasons why we get a lot of advanced stage of colorectal cancer in our country, aside for, of course, the economic uh, reasons for the poorer sections of the population, is that there is, again, delay in consultation. They mm -hmm. get embarrassed because they have rectal bleeding, they are fearful that somebody, like one of us, the colorectal surgeon, will poke his finger into a very private part of your anatomy. That's, that's not a, a comfortable uh, feeling or idea to have. You know? So this causes delay. Mm -hmm. But we need to stress to the, the general population that part of being healthy, of having a, life, a healthy lifestyle, is getting yourself screened, getting yourself checked up. And one of the, the sad things we often see in in our, our practice is you have very healthy, should, should be healthy 80-year-olds. They have no hypertension, no heart disease, um, they have no diabetes, and yet they come to us because they have a cancer. And we, we feel bad about it because if they had had the colonoscopy maybe 10 years previously, mm -hmm. this would have been avoided. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes they would seek consultation with a physician who may not even bother to do a rectal exam. Okay. Even if they are already presenting with uh, these warning signs, they will often be prescribed anti-hemorrhoidal uh, preparations or even uh, medications against what we call amoebiasis. Okay. That's still very frequent mm -hmm. because uh, they dismiss the diarrhea and the rectal bleeding as due to amoeba. And without doing a rectal exam, the physician will just prescribe something for this and not even yung pala meron na palang mm -mm. starting or beginning rectal cancer mm -hmm. so na dismiss yung uh, potential diagnosis yes. Yes. and uh, delay 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 lifestyle changes doctors are there certain types of uh, food that uh, you should take more of uh, should you avoid spicy food if you already have hemorrhoids well the what what has been what's in the literature about uh, risk factors for for colorectal cancer in terms of uh, food is food that's high in uh, fat content, uh, low, low, in in fiber. low in fiber, red meat, mm -hmm. uh, processed meat, barbecued meat, oh, all the of these stuff. are risk factors. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but uh, everything in moderation, no? but uh, would you advise your patients well, to healthy, completely avoid these, well, what, you know, what you've mentioned? Uh, what we would advise is even if you're a vegetarian, you're eating healthy, get yourself screened because that does not guarantee that you're not going to get colorectal cancer. So screening is the most important okay. uh, 
aspect of healthy living. Mm -hmm. The uh, lifestyle change? Exercise shows. also has been shown to, to decrease the incidence. Um, obesity increases the risk. Um, diabetes also. Yeah, but still, even if you're not diabetic, you get screened because mm -hmm. you don't know. Lalo na if you have risk factors yes. and if it's uh, yes. hereditary. Yes. Yes. Doctors, your final message to all our viewers um, regarding taking good care of our health, um, most especially in this part of our body. Well, for hemorrhoids and uh, fissures, these are not life-threatening conditions, um, but it's very common. We do recommend, though, that if you have symptoms in the anus, do not dismiss it. Uh, get to see an expert who will then tell you if it's a hemorrhoid or fissure, you don't need to have it treated if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. uh, but get checked because our advocacy is early diagnosis of potentially more serious problems like colorectal polyps and cancers. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Rami. Dr. Arman? Well, the good news is that a majority of anal diseases, including colorectal cancer, can be prevented and can be detected er or can be detected early. Mm -hmm. So prevention essentially requires eating a lot of fiber in your diet, exercising a lot, avoiding smoking, mm -hmm. and just essentially keeping a healthy lifestyle and good bowel habits. Okay? So for, in the same way for colorectal cancer, most of this can be either prevented if you have that healthy lifestyle or see a specialist at the earliest possible times and have yourself screened okay. at the proper time and proper age. Thank you. Uh, yes, Dr. Yes, Ram, may, may we something? announce? Yes, please go yes, ahead. Uh, as, as part of our celebrations for March, colorectal cancer awareness, we have the annual convention of the Philippine Society of Colorectal Surgeons, which will be held in May, on May 12. Um, I'm sorry, March 13, 12. March, March 12, 13, 13, 12, 13 and, 14. and 14. Okay. March 12, uh, we have live surgery at the Philippine General Hospital. March 13 mm. and 14, we have foreign lecturers coming over to share their expertise on colorectal surgery. We also have, for, for the, the patients out there or, or the relatives of patients, a lay fora on uh, March uh, 13 uh, at the Diamond Hotel also in the morning. If you want to join them, we'll have uh, lecturers on uh, the basics of colorectal cancer, how to take care of yourself, how to prevent it. Nice. Uh, if you are a survivor, we have uh, some survivors also speaking. Okay. okay. So, Doc Arman, would you like to add to that? No, no I have that's nothing it, to add. Okay, now everything. <laughs> All right. So, um, but you know, I'd like to to add that um, you've been such a big help uh, in helping yes. us understand and learn more about uh, this area of our body that you know we're we're quite embarrassed to talk about, but we shouldn't because yeah. no. it yeah. will really affect our general yeah. well-being, and we don't want to uh, find out if you have a polyps or any other medical concerns at a late at its later stage. Yes. So thank you so much for enlightening us about anal. Season. Thank you for the opportunity to be in the show as well. Angel. The pleasure Thank is ours. Marami pong salamat. See you again next week, this time on our new time slot at 9.30 p.m. Thursdays on our new home here on CNN Philippines. This is Angel Jacob for MedTalk. Good night.